welcome for today's um, session, the 1st of January 2021. Hope um, the New Year's or the New Year's Eve was quiet at home uh, with family at all with loved ones. Um, it's been an interesting year. But let's not forget this year because when we put 2020 away in a container, then we don't realize the work that we really need to do or the things that we have lost or the people that we've lost um, in the last year. So for me, I'm going to keep 2020 very much in the forefront as a reminder to do better, to um, learn more, to educate, to value the simple things, friendship, people, um, and of course our environment. So what I'd like to do today is start out with a you practice. It's going to be light, lift the mood up. Um, I think we all need that and uh, basically go with the flow, see where it takes us. As a reminder, I'd like you to be aware of your own internal sensations that come up through your postures, your range of motion, the compression and the tension, always backing away from that acute or extreme pain, pins and needles or anything that is numbing. It's not about pushing ourselves physically, mentally or emotionally to our edges, but it is to be in those three areas yet to explore the uncomfortableness. Without uncomfortableness, we'll not know what comfort is. So you'll need two blocks and a blanket. So to start out, let's come into a forward fold. You can use the two blocks here. Soft bend in the knees. You can either relax the arms down, crown of the head towards the floor, or you can support the forearms on your bricks, or if you prefer resting the forearms or the elbows onto the tops of the thighs, taking the gaze in front. Now, if you're somebody like me who sometimes I get um, vertigo, I don't like to put my head all the way down, and so I sort of lift it up a little bit, but I keep my knees bent. So see which position works for you. And once you've sort of come or arrived into your posture, move your body forward, backwards, so you know whether you're putting too much weight onto the toes, the heels, the outer edges of the foot or the inner edges of the foot. I sometimes like to take very small circular movements. Like I'm drawing a circle with a pencil attached to my tailbone. And then into the other direction. So these gentle circular movements are really nice, relaxing. And then when you've done a few rounds in both directions, then come into your center. And soften here as much as you can. And let the crown of the head move towards the floor. Breathe in here. So we find space moksha, which is really freedom. So clearing out things that we don't need to create space is freedom, is moksha. When we've broken a habit or an addiction, we've also created space for something else, and that is moksha. So depending on the context, 
the Sanskrit word will mean or will reflect that. And in our day-to-day -day lives, we can achieve and tap into that and acquire that through our practice. If you feel that you created a little more length in the back of the legs, and you can slowly straighten the legs as well. Breathing here, remember breath is very important. The exhale nice and slow again is to create space for more oxygen. And when we breathe in, we want to create more space. We want to expand in the lungs. Stay here for three more breaths. slowly you'll come down into Malasana or the squat. Now here you can stack the bricks and maybe sit on it. Or you can place each brick under each heel to raise the floor and stay here. Or you can do it without the bricks and again, resting your forearms onto that block. So same thing that we did in the standing forward fold, gentle, really slow circular movements. Or you can sway from right to left, to left to right. and then come into the center. As we move through life or as we move through our practice, the idea is to release thoughts, ideas that we don't need or that doesn't serve us at that point in our life. And when we drop something, again, we created space in the thought for something that will serve us, that will help us. And sometimes the idea of dropping those illusions or thoughts is to create space for consciousness, so that we can see consciousness, feel it, and allow consciousness to act or to radiate through us, so that every action that we make or take in life comes from consciousness, comes from clarity.
stay here for another three more breaths. Try not to rush your breath. And you've completed the third breath, then you'll we'll slowly bring the knees down and come into balance and child's pose. Now, many find child's pose in this position uncomfortable as well. So you can also take child's pose lying down. For some, this can be quite uncomfortable, quite unnerving. So if that is what you're feeling, then definitely come lying down on your back and bringing the knees to your chest. So in your balance, and I like to place a block, forehead resting onto that block. And then I take the arms by the side of the body. Or you can do it without. Or a third variation would be to thread the arms through. As you settle into your posture, begin to notice the breathing. important aspect of our practice. If we avoid breathing deeply, slowly, then we really don't nourish our whole internal system. So it's important to keep that breath fluid, to keep it nice and deep. The slower the breath, we lower the heart rate. When the heart rate is lowered, the mind or the thoughts in the mind are not all over the place, they become more quiet. And when the mind is quiet, the body also becomes still. change the direction of your gaze. And stay here for another three more breaths. Mm -hmm. When you've completed the third breath, take your time, there's absolutely no rush. As you slowly unwind from the pose, Take a moment there, pause. Maybe stir or give the body some kind of movement. And then making your way into tabletop. 
taking a couple of cat cow rolls here, nice and steady. And then we move into frog pose. Now in frog, it's always important to protect the knees. So you'll have your blanket folded this way, going across the mat. And you wanna make sure that when you do move into this wide child's pose, that your insides of the knees are protected by the blanket. So you'll go as far as you need to, and then walk the legs out. The knees are still bent. You take the block, place it just underneath the belly. Now, the position of the toes can either point away from the center line of the mat, or it can be pointed back, or you can move into a wide child's pose, which is a tap pole. So literally bringing the feet even closer. So the positioning of your ankles or toes will determine the sensation that you feel in the hips. And again, if you find that the floor is too far away, raise the floor up by placing a block underneath the belly. quite a deep hip position. When I first started hearing the words of moksha and the big words that reflected like liberation and freedom, I always thought to myself, what does it really mean? How do we access that liberation, that freedom? And words like these, like liberation, I find is, is heavy. And so I started to move through simpler terms of um, discerning, peeling, and trying to understand what it really means and how can I access it in my day-to-day -day life. language simple, relatable. There's more chances of us really connecting to the essence of what we're trying to achieve in terms of understanding these words and how we can bring them into our lives. So for me, it's important that I work towards examples, um, experiences that I can use in everyday life. So let's stay here for another three more breaths. breath you remove the block bring the belly all the way down taking your time as you straighten the legs stay here for a bit that was an intense pose so you want to give time for the joints or for the ligaments and tissues to sort of come back to its neutral position And then when you feel ready, 
gently press up and make your way into child's pose just to create that extension. This time walk the arms out in front of you. then slowly making your way up. Coming on to your sit bones. Bending both the knees and taking the left leg over the right knee into the figure four. You have a few options here. You can walk the hip closer to that right heel. You can lie down and do the figure four or walk the legs out a little bit and if you have that wall space, you can press the toes into the wall. Take the arms further back. And then lift the chest here. Breathing. Keep that gaze in front. And then remember that space, moksha, free. Creating space. The whole idea is to create space within us for something that we value, something that is beneficial to us, something that will serve a purpose to deepen our practice, to appreciate our life, our environment, our community. Two more breaths. And then gently uncross the leg. And then if you like, wind, you wipe the knees. Or not. Sometimes you don't need to move the body after um, coming out of a posture. So we're gonna move into a double pigeon. I have my left leg over my right knee, so I'm gonna keep my left leg in front, taking my right leg towards the back. I wanna keep a somewhat 90 degree angle between my left knee and the ankle, and the same with my back leg. But here's the thing, your toes can either point out, back, or in, or if you prefer, you can bring the leg even a little closer towards your hip. But we want to keep that front one somewhat at a 90 degree angle. And then we come into a forward fold here. Again, raising the floor. You can explore with the spine either coming Falling over that knee towards the center or towards the right side. The positioning of your spine again will vary the sensation within the hip or target different areas within the hip. So for me, I'm going to lean over. So this double pigeon is a nice pose to get into if or when sometimes you don't want to move into the full pigeon pose. 
So I'm going to start out in this direction here. And I'm going to explore the full center and the right. And notice if you're engaging or tightening in the glutes, try to soften those muscles. You want to maybe move towards the center you'll notice again you'll feel it in a different area of the hip if the hip is a wide space uh, wide area Gentle reminder of keeping the breath fluid, keeping it slow. There's absolutely no need to rush. And if you want to explore moving into the different direction, Three more breaths here. And then slowly making your way up. Staying here for a moment, taking your time as you change size. So I'm just going to flip over and this time bring my right ankle over my left knee. Walking my left heel a little closer in, walking the arms further back. And then lifting that chest. Taking the gaze in front, or you can drop the head back. The more you get to know your body, the more you sort of interact with your physical body. You know what it needs, and you know for how long it needs it. Three more breaths. And then slowly walking the arms back towards you before you release that top leg. 
and then coming into the double pigeon on the other side. So again, start with folding over that right knee and then you'll explore yourself towards the left. So you move from moving straight across to the center and then more towards a twist. So I'm not sure if you can see me. Yeah, because so I have that table in front. towards the middle. taking it towards that left side and as you can see my left hip is not as open as I'd like to think it was or is as my right Two more breaths. And slowly taking your time up, pause for a moment. Because that twist can be quite intense. And again, taking your time as you lean back to lift that left, and then we will chew wipe the knees. From here, we're going to move into a twisted dragon. So again, protecting the knee. I'm going to start with my left side. I'm going to bring my right leg in front. So my left knee is resting on the floor. I walk my right leg slightly towards the right edge of the mat. Now for me, when I put too much weight onto the hands, it's very uncomfortable and there's too much pressure on my wrist. So I raise the floor, place a block, and then I rest my forearm onto it, which is much sturdier and stronger. And then gently use my right hand as I slowly press that right knee away from you, lifting up the inner arch of that right foot. Taking a gentle twist here. So try to not just pretend not to stay too long unless you have 
a regular practice and you really know your lunges or your the amount your body can take or go into. Stay here for another three more breaths. slowly bringing that right hand to the floor, lifting the hip and straightening that right leg and pausing there for a moment. So even here, when you come out of the pose, after creating that tension in the ligaments and the tissues, we create also a little space. And you see, that also is freedom, right? Freedom from the tightness of how our hips felt before we did the pose. So the thing is to find that space, that freedom in every little thing that we do, think, speak, listen, move the foot a little bit, see how that movement feels in that right hip socket. And then we'll change sides. So again, protecting the knee, always important. Stepping the left foot forward. Right elbow onto the block. Three more breaths. Almost there. And then taking your time as you come out, always pausing. And then bringing movement into it the body. So now again, moving into the low dragon lunge. Dragon lunges, are, I find, are really nice. Brings up, creates heat, changes the mood, um, really targets the digestion area. And it definitely changes the mood. So it's a nice thing to come into. So we're gonna go into a, a low dragon lunge here. So I'm gonna again walk my foot slightly up to the side, bring both the blocks, resting my forearms onto the block here. And I let my right knee splay open to the side. So again, lifting my inner right arch. And I also like to sort of gently roll my hip left to right, exploring. Again, the hip being a vast area. And sometimes I want to get into different areas of the hip. And that's the, uh, the beauty of yin, right? There's no just one pose. You can find, um, you can target different areas through the movement of 
your or the placement of your hands or your feet. What may suit uh, one person may not suit another person. And the practice of yin really connects you to your body, invites you to really get to know it from the inside out. Three more breaths. that feeling of release that it's almost like an afterglow but that's how I connect with that sensation when you come out of a posture that too is freedom that too is space and then changing sides so you're targeting that hip flexor you're also targeting as I said compression in the belly You can explore with the position of your toes. Turning it inwards gives it a very different, again, targets a different area, brings up a different sensation. Pointing the toes back differently. very relaxing, soothing. Three more breaths. Again, when you come out of the posture, pause and enjoy that afterglow. And then stepping the legs back, bringing both the thighs together. And then as you inhale, squeeze the inner thighs towards each other, realigning the hip and relax. One more time. Inhale and release. And then we come lying down onto our back. We're going to use the blocks here. Bending at the knees as you lift the hips up, slide the blocks horizontally under your sacrum. You want to feel fully supported there and then lift the legs up. This is great for the circulation, the swollen feet. And if you feel you want to change the position of the legs, you can also take them into the V pose. Use your hands here to support the outer edges of the legs. So a new 
new year. You know, we can always reinvent ourselves, but let's stay true to who we are as well. So we're shedding thoughts, we're shedding views, ideas, sensation on a regular basis. And so without realizing we are creating space always in our lives. But what tends to happen is that when we create space, we fill it up quickly with something. So try to work towards creating and maintaining that space and notice it get, notice that space, how it can get wider. And what we really want to fill that space is with clarity is that connection with awareness, consciousness. And then from here, draw the legs in. Let's keep them up for a few more breaths. Last two breaths. And then gently bend at the knees, hugging the knees in towards you. Lowering the feet to the ground, lifting the hips, removing the blocks. And straightening the legs out. Staying here for about three breaths. into Shavasana. Make sure you keep your body warm, wearing a sweater, covering yourself with a blanket. You can also bring the legs against the wall. Stay as long as you need to. And join my hands to end this practice. Nice deep inhale. That's it. Thank you. And have a happy new year. <laughs>